Good evening. Welcome to QUT Web News. Good evening. Just days after axing 800 jobs across the country, Woolworths has unveiled plans to create 2,000 new positions in Queensland. The Premier was keen to join in on the announcement while flagging her concerns about tomorrow's federal budget. Would you like to try some freshly baked cookies? Oh, I won't say no. A sweet biscuit to go with a sweet jobs announcement. If I have to. Woolworths has announced new plans to create 2,000 new jobs in Queensland. We have got plans for further investment of up to, um, in excess of $100 million in the next 12 to 18 months and well beyond that as well. The retail giant was unveiling its new store in Everton Park, which will bring 600 new jobs to the local area. 1,000 construction workers helped build the facility. We know the proud history of Woolworths in Queensland, uh, always making sure that there are local jobs and local construction. The Everton Park store will open to customers tomorrow afternoon. Just before the budget. That's right. <laughs> I'm sure everyone's going to be stocking up to you know, go home and watch the budget. While the government was keen to stress their investment in job creation, the Premier says she is very concerned about the federal budget to be released tomorrow. The government says any further cuts would hurt Queensland. What we know is that Mr Hockey uh, made some serious cuts uh, to, uh, by way of ending national partnership agreements on health and education. So my message to the Federal Treasurer is stay away from cuts to health and education. But the Premier and Treasurer were giving no hints to their first budget due in July. That's a really good coffee. 10 out of 10. Toby Loftus, QUT News. To Canberra. And the Abbott government's multi-billion dollar childcare package is under fire from within. Government senators among those attacking parts of the overhaul to be unveiled in tomorrow night's federal budget. They're concerned that the changes appear to shift funds from one income families and stay-at-home parents could miss out. On the eve of the budget's release, senators had a lot to say about the changes to childcare payments. The mums and dads of Australia should, uh, have, should make their own mind up about who looks after their children. His Liberal colleague agrees. If you go back to first principles, you say why wouldn't we be encouraging uh, parents to look after their children rather than paying someone else to look after their children. The new scheme will mean stay-at-home families with one income of $65,000 or more could lose their childcare payment. But families with working parents and a combined income of $170,000 will save up to $30 a week. While we're used to seeing Treasurer Joe Hockey at budget time, it was the Social Services Minister making all the appearances this morning. The only people who, who may not get subsidies for childcare now are those uh, that they get now are those on incomes over 65,000 who aren't working, volunteering, looking for work or studying for more than four hours a week. The changes aim to stop parents from double dipping in financial support from their employer and the government. Families will be limited to a maximum payment of $11,500. Brittany Levinson, QUT News. Thousands of school students will be needing an early night's sleep, with NAPLAN's testing kicking off this week. The nationwide assessment will rank students' abilities in reading, writing and numeracy. Lessons were put on hold to welcome a special visitor. The Education Minister, Kate Jones, visited Patrick's Road State School ahead of tomorrow's NAPLAN testing. Well, I'm a little bit nervous, but we've been having a lot of preparation, so it, um, I think I'll do well. <laughs> the test, held over three days, assessed students' reading, writing and math skills. The results are really powerful as a, a measure or a tool for us to see how we're performing with our teaching of literacy and numeracy. Um, literacy and numeracy is obviously our core business. The results will show how Queensland kids compare to the rest of the country. We don't want to add any pressure to our young people going into NAPLAN. We know that the work and effort they put in the classroom has prepared them well for the NAPLAN tests this week. While these Year 5 students aren't too worried... I'm feeling good and I think it will be great and it won't be that scary. I've been working really hard in class. Some parents are. I think sometimes our parents worry a bit more about how their children will perform in NAPLAN. With three days of testing starting tomorrow, the key message for students sitting NAPLAN is not to stress but to try your best. 
Having already done the hard yards in class, it seems a good night's sleep and a healthy breakfast is all that's left to do. Edwina Seselja, QUT News. The RSPCA has launched a campaign to desex your pets. Operation Wanted will see vets across the state lower their fees to stem an alarming spread of feral cats and dogs. Operation Wanted aims to tackle the problem of pet overpopulation in Queensland and stop the increase of feral animals. With almost 200 vets already signed up for the project, the RSPCA hopes to desex more than 60,000 animals in the next few months. So we need to make sure pets are great but they need to be desexed. This is the way to do it and save some money at the same time. The state government is playing its part, saying Australia's native wildlife is too often falling prey to feral cats and dogs. As you can see, our, uh, our pet cats and dogs are, are super cute, but uh, so are our native wildlife. For Operation Wanted to have maximum effect, the RSPCA needs more Brisbane vets to join. Desexing pets also helps ease the strain on animal shelters. There are too many animals being born from unplanned, unplanned pregnancies and there's not enough homes for all the animals that are born. Desexing pets has many advantages, including reducing unwanted litters and some cancers. If this little kitten isn't desexed, she and her offspring could be responsible for over 1,000 cats in just five years. So the message is simple do your bit and desex your pet. Toby Crawford, QUT News. A 23 year old man has thanked the volunteer paramedics who helped save his life in Brisbane's north in March. Nick Riley sustained severe chest injuries after he was pinned to the ground when the car he was working on fell on him. Nick Riley was working under his friend's car in his garage when disaster struck. Yeah, we're trying to lift up the car. Okay, we've pulled him out from under the car. You've pulled him out now, have you? Yep, yep, yep. Just, I'm really struggling to breathe. Volunteer ambulance workers Peter McCoy and Raiming Ong were called to the scene. They gave Mr Riley critical first aid before he was taken to hospital. I'm well, very thankful because I'm here still. <laughs> Jesus, a lot of people are surprised that I am here, <laughs> standing still. <laughs> Mr Riley suffered eight broken ribs and a collapsed lung. But thanks to the quick medical response, he was out of hospital within eight days. A fantastic outcome and it's, it's really good to see, uh, to see Nick and to meet him afterwards, yes. Obviously we don't do much talking with him uh, during the uh, incident itself. Queensland's ambulance service has around 1,600 volunteers and around 350 first responders who are trained in advanced first aid and given trauma kits. When paged, they respond from home in their own vehicle. These people donate their time, uh, they're virtually the unsung heroes uh, and they do this day in, day out. The recognition of these two first respondents coincides with the beginning of National Volunteer Week, the annual tribute to the more than 22,000 Australians who volunteer each year. Sam Weston, QUT News. The new Commission of Inquiry into the 2011 Grantham floods began calling for public submissions today. In January four years ago, 12 people were killed and hundreds of homes left in ruin following the devastating floods. Among the issues the inquiry will explore is why an unexpected wall of water hit the Lockyer Valley region. I spoke just uh, last week to the Mayor, Steve Jones, and he was very thankful that the government had taken this decisive step in allowing people to put forward their views and allowing them a form of closure. The inquiry is expected to be completed by August. In AFL, the Brisbane Lions went into yesterday's clash against Carlton as a club in crisis, but they left Etihad Stadium with a gutsy, morale-boosting nine-point win, their first of the season. While the Blues loss leaves legendary coach Mick Malthouse's head on the chopping block. It was Sunday night football elation for the Lions and Mother's Day heartbreak for Blues coach Mick Malthouse as Brisbane held on in a gutsy win over Carlton. Brisbane was down by 14 in the third quarter. But this time, instead of crumbling, the Lions played as winners with aggression. Standout performances from several players, including the under-fire Alan Christensen, inspired the surge. The final goal came from the boot of the Brisbane captain. Rockcliffe knows the gravity of the situation and he steers it through. Coach Justin Lepich says this is just the beginning and he's proud of his young team. But the horror show continues for the embattled Carlton coach. 
This match against the last place team, Malthouse's fifth loss in six games. You almost see the headlines now, can't you? We said at the outset we deal in losers, while well, Carlton will feel the heat this week. While the calls for his head are growing, Malthouse says he has no plans to walk away. Bernard Thompson, QUT News. And in NRL, the Brisbane Broncos welcomed back Darius Boyd with an 8-5 win against the Penrith Panthers. Coach Wayne Bennett says he's pleased with Boyd's return, adding that he played well despite an Achilles injury. The nail-biting try set up by playmaker Ben Hunt allowed a match-winning try by Corey Oates in the 79th minute. From full time, the Broncos have grabbed the victory back from the jaws of defeat. And it's down. That's a try they've won. They have won the ball game. Boyd is tipped to be named in the Maroons side to take on New South Wales in Origin 1 on May 27 in Sydney. Time now for a look at the weather. We had another trademark Queensland day today with bright blue skies across the state. Temperatures in the southeast today. Ipswich dipped to a chilly 7 degrees overnight, but a pleasant day all round, 25 in Brisbane and 26 on the Gold and Sunshine Coasts. Around the nation tomorrow and showers and 14 for Canberra. Showers as well for Melbourne, 16 the top. A sunny day in Darwin with 32 the max. The forecast for Queensland and Townsville tomorrow will be sunny with a top of 29. 27 in Mackay and Rocky, 28 the top for Longreach. Looking at the weather for Brisbane over the next three days, expect clear skies with a top of 24 for tomorrow and Wednesday. A cold morning on Thursday though, rising to a max of 21. That brings you up to date with the weather. And that's all the news we have for now. We'll be back tomorrow with more QUT web news. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>